Hey, what's going on? If you're like me, when you create your FL Studio sessions, you get in the zone, you get real creative, um, but then everything gets scattered everywhere and there's no organization to it. So this video is going to show you how to take your mess <laughs> and put some organization around it so that when you go back to your session or uh, you know you have a client that needs specific things, it'll be easy for you to deliver that. So let's get right into it. So I have a session here, um, and it's pretty much mixed. I have all the instruments that I, I need. I have them in the, the channels that I want, put the effects on them, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but as you can see, there's uh, not everything is labeled. Um, nothing is grouped together. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of, when I'm in my creative process, I, I think of it as like when you're cooking, right? Uh, normally, if you're making a big mess in the kitchen and not cleaning your dishes as you go, the food's probably going to taste better, right? Because you're in that creative mindset. You want to stay in that mindset. And if you're, you know, organizing and editing and even even mixing to a certain degree while you're putting everything together, um, it can kind of, it means you have to switch between that creative part of your mind and that organizational. So, you know, right brain, left brain, that whole thing. So this is the way I like to work. I like to just make a big mess and then clean it up after. So I'm going to show you what I do after a song is ready to go. All right. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I tie the playlist, the instrument rack, and the mixer channels all to the same thing. So I make sure every instrument is on its own uh, playlist channel, uh, mixer channel, and its own instrument rack. That way it gives me the flexibility when I export the stems to uh, you know really mix it well and have individual instruments and I can I can uh, put it exactly the way I want it. So um, as you can see this swell for example is not yet tied to that. So what I do is I right click. Oh actually before I do that I click on swell so when you click on a pattern you'll see right here on the left hand side you want to be in the pattern picker here it highlights that pattern automatically so if I hit tribe it goes to that pattern so I'm gonna do swell there we go it's highlighted and when it's highlighted when you bring up the instrument rack which is this one right here you can see the piano rolls populated here so you know that it's track number 23 Right, so I want to tie this to track number 23 on my mixer board as well. So I'm going to right click, go down to, do, hold on, second. Where is it? Am I crazy here? Hold on. Where's my, oh, swell, that's why. I'm not on the right one. Okay, track mode. So uh, the other one I was clicking on is already in track mode, so there was no option for that, but track mode, you wanna go to audio track, and you remember that we were on insert 26. Now we wanna name it, I'm gonna name it swell. And if you go to the mixer track, You can see that track number 26 right here is now called Swell. So it's called Swell in all three places. Now I'm going to show you another trick. Actually, I don't want to name it Swell exactly. I'm going to name it M underscore Swell. Now why am I doing that? Basically, uh, especially if you're working with TV and film, uh, they want the you know they want the drum tracks. You know, when you send the stems, they don't want every single individual instrument. They just want, you know, three to four stems. Sometimes, you know, I've worked with uh, some of them that want up to nine stems. Uh, but most of the time, drums definitely, bass definitely on their own track, and everything else, which they may call melodies. Now, they may break that up into high strings, low strings, horns, you know, whatever they specifically ask for. But when I title my tracks... I put them in, you know, D for drums, uh, 
M for melody or B for bass, so that when I export the stems, um, they export in alphabetical order. So when I import them back into a session, let's say I wanted to mix some vocals in, for example, um, I'll have all my drums grouped together, I'll have all of my melodies grouped together and my bass grouped together, and it'll be real easy to create a channel bus or something like that. So um, when I'm mixing vocals in, I can make those adjustments really easily and color code it and keep it organized. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, for example, choir. I've uh, worked with some TV and film people that want all of their vocals and choirs in one particular stem, but for this case, just to you know, kind of make it easy, since this one isn't necessarily dedicated to a, 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 a library yet, I'm just going to call it, so we're going to do rename, I'm just going to call it M for melodies, because it's not bass and it's not drums. So, you go through and you do that for every track. I'm going to stop the recording here and come back and show you that done, and then I'll show you next steps. Okay, we're back. Um, I've done every single track except for this last one. I thought it might be a good idea just to go over the process one more time. So we have this one called Bang. Uh, let's listen to it real quick. Probably put that in the drum category. It's definitely percussive. Um, so we actually click it and it highlights down here. You can see it's highlighted. We open the instrument rack up here. And we can see that it's on track 38. So I'm going to right click on that track, go to track mode, choose 38. Go. And I'm going to rename it D for drum. And bang. I think bang's a good descriptor for it. There we go. All right. Awesome. So now we have all of our tracks with that naming convention where there's kind of a letter before everything. Um, you can see there's a few extra tracks that are not populated. I like to just go ahead and delete those, but just really be careful and double check that you don't have anything on the track. And if it's grayed out like this, you know it doesn't. So I'm just gonna do that real quick to the tracks that are not populated. There we go. There's another one here. Okay, and next I'm going to organize my instrument rack. I'm sorry, my uh, mixer channels. So let's go to the mixer. All right. Now, as you can see, there's a few kind of tracks in between. I like to put them all together. And the way that I move these is you hold Alt and you can do the right or left arrow to move them where you want. And then if you click com uh, Control or Command if you have an Apple, um, actually Control Shift, Control Shift, and just left click, it'll highlight all of them at once. And then you can Alt Arrow, and I'm going to highlight this one too, and add that to the pack, and Alt Arrow to the right. All right, let's pick this guy up. Control Shift, right there. Alt to the right, and we'll pick this one up. That's control shift again or command shift and we're moving it to the right and you can actually use the mouse wheel as long as you're up here to move this side to side like this all right uh, control shift to the right oh oops control shift I'm gonna right click them again you can do it that way you can just drag it across as long as you're holding uh, control and shift at the same time alt right arrow pick this one up Alt right arrow and pick that one up. Alt right arrow. Stay up in this section, do the mouse wheel, and you can see that all the tracks are together. And now we're ready to export. Um, obviously, you'll want to listen to your track one time through to make sure you didn't mess anything up, that everything's tied to the right channel. Um, if you did make a mistake, you could have put an instrument on a different mixer channel, which could add new effects or compression or, or whatever. So you just want to double check that first. Um, you'll also want to lower your, especially if you're doing this for mastering, you'll want to lower your master channel and go to 
So I would go to the loudest part of your song. This is a trailer track, if you're wondering what that noise was. Um, <laughs> you want to go to like the loudest part of your song, which for me is going to be towards the end. Um, and I like to give it a good 6 dB of headroom. here give me a sec all right so that's pretty good it's ready for export um, I did listen to this track earlier to make sure I didn't mess anything up and everything was still good so the next step is we're gonna export it uh, and we're gonna export the stems and I'll show you what that looks like so um, let's go to file export wave most of the people that I work with like uh, frequency uh, 4800 or sorry 48,000 and 24 bit. Uh, we'll see those settings in just a moment. Actually, I'm going to change the name of this track. I'm going to call it Underworld. It's a little gothic. I think that's a better title. I'm just going to put it on my desktop right now. Um, here we go. Save. You'll want to make sure that you have split mixer tracks selected. That's what divides it into all of the tracks. Actually, we need to create a folder before we do that. If you do that and you put it on your desktop, you're going to have tracks everywhere. So give me one second. Um, export, wave file. So it's going to desktop. Let's create a folder. So in Windows, you can right click, do new. I'm going to call this underworld stems there we go and after this since I'm retitling it you'll want to make a copy of your session and rename it just so you're not confused later down the road uh, but for the stems for the stems don't necessarily need it okay and we're gonna hit save and split mixer tracks and hit start I'm gonna stop the recording I'll start the rendering, but I'm going to stop the recording so you don't have to wait for it to render, but I'll be right back. Okay, so it's rendered. Um, let's take a look at it real quick. You can see it's right here, Underworld Stems. Um, let's go to, you know, I have a, a physical hard drive that I use, like a 4 terabit hard drive, and I also use Google Drive to back things up as well. Um, always a good idea to back your stuff up. Uh, you never know. You may have some project that you worked on five, six years ago, and if, at least if you have the stems, you know, you may not have the same laptop, you may not have the same software or sessions or things like that, but at least if you have the stems, you can make adjustments, add things. Um, but I'm just going to save it to my physical hard drive for now. I have a folder called TV and Film Music. Um, this is actually part of a new album. Um, I'm going to call it Abyss. So there are a bunch of uh, gothic type trailer tracks and underscores, so I'm going to add that in there. Um, let me find the folder, so I'm going to drag that in there as well. Um, and let's call this Underworld. Well, it is called Underworld. Underworld. Give it its own folder, just wait for that to come over. But while we're waiting for that, let me just show you real quickly how it exported. So you can see you have all the Bs. So um, looks like we did not title a couple of them correctly, so we missed something. Uh, we'll fix that in a second. But you can see here that Underworld Current and Underworld Master, which should be down here. These two tracks you can, uh, you can delete because they're just... A sum of all the you know obviously it's your master channel so it has all of their tracks on there the same with current just like the current version so you can delete that you can delete current um, this I'm going to fix this in the actual session but it should be called it's actually bass I call it boing because that's kind of what it sounds like <laughs> but it is a bass sound um, 
Let me rename it here. B. There we go. Okay, so we have our basses together. We have our drums together. And you can see there's a few empty tracks as well called insert. We know that we tied everything together um, in, in the mixer channel, in the, uh, the playlist, and in the instrument channel. So we know that these are empty. I'll pull one up just to so you can see uh, that it is actually empty. Actually, it'd be better just to pull it up in uh, FL Studio. So let's do that. So let me go back to my FL Studio session. Here we go. All right, I'm just gonna save. Always save. Um, and we're gonna open, uh, get, you know, remember what the tempo is. It's gonna be 74, so let's open up a new session. Um, here we go. It's working on it. Got a lot of plugins with this one, so it may take a second. There we go. Tempo 74. Gonna put it on song mode. And I'm just gonna drag all of these into the interface. So let's say somebody called and was like, can you take the strings out? Or can you uh, remove the vocals? Or let, make a eight second, 30 second, one minute version of this. I'm gonna pull it in. And this will be the easy one. You can just always go back to your stems and you'll have them ready. I'm just going to pull it all the way over. All right. All right. Sounds good. But you can see here that all of these... Ooh, we have one insert channel. It's a good thing we did this. We have one insert channel. 36 insert 36 that has audio on it but is not labeled so that is good to know we'll go back into the session we'll figure out what this is um everything else is labeled and in there though so we are looking good but these other insert channels we can just get rid of that are called insert this insert that there we go. We'll go back to investigate this. But that is how you do it. That's how you organize it. That's how you have your stems ready. If somebody calls on you to bring this session back up or you need to mix vocals in, this will be ready to go. Okay, so that was my video on how to organize things after you've made your mess, <laughs> after you've uh, produced your track and got it the way you like it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for your time. And if you did like this video, like, share, subscribe, and I do have a question. Uh, how do you organize things? Uh, if you have any good tips, tricks for anybody watching this video, please leave it in the comments. And uh, I'd love to check that out. And hopefully I can even improve the way I, I organize things as well. So thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.